In this drawing, there are a couple of alignments, RD1 here and RD2 here. There are also finished ground profiles for those alignments here. And I've created several assemblies in this drawing as well here. Come here in Prospector and go to Alignments, and you'll see that I have those alignments listed here. With this RD1, there are several profiles. I had an existing ground surface profile, and I had two offset profiles as well. And then I have this last one, FGRD1, which is the finished ground profile, and that's the one that I'll use. We could go to the profile view for that, select that, and then zoom to and see that that is the one that we will want to select. Now, if I come down in the prospector and look at the assemblies that I have in this drawing, you'll see that I have several assemblies. This is the one that I want to use, so I'll select it, right click, and then go to zoom to and locate that in my drawing. That's the one that I want to use. All right, let's put them all together in a quarter. I'm zoomed out so that I can see that alignment, that profile, and that assembly. First off, I'll come here on the Home tab, go to Create Design, and then select Corridor. I have two options. I can create a simple corridor and create a corridor. They're really doing this exact same thing, except that I'm going to use Create Simple Corridor. That will just use one baseline or alignment, one profile, one assembly. Once I've created that corridor, I can come back and edit it to make it a more complex corridor. So I'll select that, and I'll be taken here where I can give this corridor a name. And I'll just call this Corridor 1. I'll assign it a style, give it a layer, and those are acceptable to me. So I'll click OK. Next, I'll be asked here to select a baseline. And I'll just come into my drawing and select that from the drawing. If I wasn't sure, I could press Enter to select the alignments from a list. I'll select that from the drawing. Then I'll select a profile, and I'll select this blue one. And then I want to select an assembly, and that was this one here. Again, for all of these elements of this corridor, I could press Enter to select those elements from a list. Now that I've selected those, I'm taken to this dialog box where I can set the target mapping. For this assembly, I have some daylighting and I want that daylighting to go to the existing ground surface. So I'll select here and select the existing ground surface and click OK. And that's assigned that existing ground to both the right and the left side of that assembly. I don't have any width or elevation targets, so I'll leave those empty and click on OK. And my corridor has been built, and if I zoom up over here, you'll see that my corridor exists right there. Now I want to bring this corridor back so that it's not going through this intersection right now. And to do that, I'll select on my corridor, and I'll go to the corridor properties. And I'll just simply select that box. And you'll notice that a blue line appears around that corridor, and a dialog box has appeared that's showing me that corridor. What it's showing me is this region right here. And I told you that I wanted that to not go through the intersection. So I'll come here and change the end station. I'll select this button. And I'll select some point back away from that intersection. And that's assigned that end station here. Now I also want to change the frequency. So I'll select here on frequency. I'll leave the tangent set to 25 feet, and I'll change this along curves to be 10 feet. And that's just so that I'll give a little bit more smoothing to those curves. I'll click OK, and I'll click OK again. And that corridor has been rebuilt with the ending station here, and there's been some frequency added to the curve here. 
And that's just how you create a simple corridor in Civil 3D.